All right, so how's everybody doing? We are back for another episode of Colonizing Duna. If you didn't catch the last couple episodes, we sent a rover in the first episode. Then we also sent a space station, and it's in orbit. And we also landed a lander that'll be a shuttle between the surface and the station. So we will hop back in the VAB and the goal of today's video, as you saw from the thumbnail, is to build a base. I tried to actually make this like a multi-part base, but uh, I kept having Kraken attacks and I just really wasn't feeling it. So I just cheated and I, uh, I guess it's not really cheating, but you know, I just did a, a single launch base, built it as strong as I could so it would survive. I'm not sure how it would do when heating is finally put into KSP2. It might, without a fairing at least, you might have some, some issues trying to build something like this, but we'll see. But anyways, I uh, kind of went back and forth on what I wanted to do base-wise. And I think what I finally settled on is actually pretty cool. I haven't seen many bases like it. Um, it's not too too unique, you know. It is still like that uh, I don't, cross. It's not exactly a cr perfect cross, but you know what I'm saying. It's like that four point design that is somewhat common in KSP. You know, you see a lot of people building it, but I don't know. I do like how this turned out. I th I think it I think it went well. If you are asking yourself right now how this thing flies with the current state of KSP, KSP2, um, I would say not great. On liftoff, I probably get maybe just out a single digit frame rate, probably upper single digit. But uh, I suffer through it and put this into orbit and. That can be fixed in editing. I just speed it up a little bit and you can never tell it was very laggy. You might you might pick up on it a little bit as we're launching, but not too much. So all in all, it actually goes pretty well for considering how many parts and how glitchy and just poorly optimized KSP2 is. I I'm taking it as a win because we got it there, landed it. I, no spoilers, I guess. I wouldn't be making the video if I didn't land it. So, what kind of video would that be if I just make a video like, oh well, I guess we'll try next time. But yeah, uh, back to the build. We're kind of wrapping up here. We have our uh, ground, we have our legs on it. We got some solar panels on it. Um, we went ahead and threw some extra batteries on it. It would probably be fine with all of the pod batteries, but you know, Duna's got some long nights, so we'll give her a le little extra juice. Yeah, we uh, went ahead and built those antenna towers, which I thought looked pretty cool. I was worried that they would, you know, cause problems just with with collision or whatever clipping, but uh, they went pretty well. So that's the final build, and we're just going to throw it over on the runway. and have Tim fly us to space. And there you can see that that laggy frame rate. That's what I that's what I deal with the pretty much the entire time. But we can go ahead and speed it up so we don't have to deal with that now. Uh, I did actually build throw the boosters on and everything. You know, just my typical booster design, a main rocket with solid fuel boosters. The reason I use solid fuel boosters is I was having a ton of problems, like 
I haven't been able to successfully use fuel lines to where you can transfer all fuel as you use it. It just, it, it messes up the Delta V estimations. I don't, I don't even mess with it anymore. So I just use solid fuel boosters and we're gonna continue to do that during early access. But yeah, some uh, news on that actually. They did come out and say they are going to not do as frequent patch releases. So that's kind of kind of sucks, but you know, we might get better quality patch releases, even though you know they're less frequent. So I'm really hoping the next one is a good one. I don't really expect too much on the roadmap as opposed to just, you know, general quality updates and, you know, quality fixes, things like that. So uh, here's the hoping. We're just uh, finalizing our circularization around Kerbin here, and here we are in orbit. We are going to use a another booster that I've built here. We're just gonna send it up and skip the skip the launch and rendezvous with the base up there and go ahead and get docked with it. And we will use it to fly to Duna. Alright, so we will go ahead and begin our burn to exit Kerbin's sphere of influence. Got those nuclear engines, so uh, this actually took a little while for me, but I'll speed things up so we don't have to sit through it. Then I'm going to go ahead and warp out a sphere of influence here and start planning our maneuver to Duna. Burn prograde there, but... First, we have to set Duna as our target so we can get a little bit of information. We can go ahead and dial in our maneuver here, get an encounter. Perfect. We can warp to it. And go ahead and execute our burn. Again, got the nuclear engine, so we'll go ahead and speed this burn up just so we can get to our encounter. I don't really nail it on this first try, so I have to go in for a little bit of adjustment, but that's okay. You know, it's a very, very small adjustment, and we have way more fuel than we need for this trip, so. Right, we'll go ahead and time warp out to our encounter and warp to the periapsis of our encounter. Get ourselves positioned retrograde and burn to circularize. And a small oversight on my part, I actually forgot to add a engine that will burn off the last little bit of speed that the parachutes can't slow me down like right as we launch so i actually have to send another another part but at this point i just go ahead and and leave it i have the the docking port on it so it's not too much trouble to just send another part out here and rendezvous and use it which you will see that here momentarily. And here we are, we have our orbit around Duna and we're just gonna clean it up, get an equatorial orbit. We can bring our orbit down to about 80,000 or so. It doesn't really matter because we're landing and I'm not really sure where we're landing. I did do a little bit of scouting, but 
it all looks the same, so. <laughs> Where I land, I do like, it's kind of like mountainous a little bit. It's not like super, super mountainous, but. But yeah, the, what you just saw was that, that part I end up using to burn off that last little bit of speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it docked, skip the launch on it. And then I will use that nuclear booster down there. Just uh just to kind of give it a, a shove, you know. We're just gonna give it a little push to to deorbit. Alright, we'll uh position this retrograde so we know which way to push and then we can pop over to this nuclear booster and go ahead and get lined up for that I wasn't really sure if this was gonna work but it actually worked great so I'll go ahead and show you that getting lined up here we uh, take it nice and easy there we go I'm didn't hit it as hard as it looks this is sped up so there we go and the base itself actually has enough of the stabilizers so it can hold itself like that while the nuclear booster pushes it which I was thankful for all right yeah we're just gonna kind of pick a spot to land here I won't have much control over exactly where I land so I'll just kind of have to Bring it down like this and then hope we get a good spot. I can, I will be able to adjust a little bit. You can, if you have to, you can push a base around with a rover. You know, if you be very delicate and just be gentle, take your time. You can get it done. Especially if you need to push it down a hill. Sometimes they just fall down a hill, but if they don't, you can, you can definitely assist it with a rover. All right, so we're gonna come in for our final descent with the base. I'm gonna go ahead and open my parachutes a little early here. I got them set with the action group for whatever reason when I deployed them using staging, uh, the fuel vanished out of my fuel tank and I didn't have that last little bit of fuel that I needed. As you can see, I, I only have 20 meters per second, but it ends up being about perfect. I could have used a little more, but... We're gonna bring her down nice and gentle, as gentle as we can. And our legs are still attached, so... Like I said, we're gonna call that a win. So here we are on Duna's surface. We're gonna get everything situated here with the base. We're gonna to try to wiggle off this engine here so we can have our engineer hop out and recycle it. I really hope that's how it works. You know, it would be really cool if, uh, like once they add like the real colonization in the game, if you could like take parts like that and just, I don't know, recycle them and you get them be able to use them for something. All right, and we are on a slight incline, so I'm gonna do my best to use suspension to level out the base here. That looks pretty good. And this is where it's going to stay, at least for now, until we get, get a rover over here and do some pushing down the hill to get it on more level ground. We'll go ahead and let Tim get out here and stretch his legs. 
He can plant a flag and then we will leave him to it. But that's all I have for today. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you care to, I would also really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. So as always, thanks for watching.